Here we go. Uh, in seat one, right out from Brooklyn, it's going to be Simon Lamb with over 6.1 million in chips. Seat one. All right, at seat two, residing in Las Vegas is Craig Varnell with over 1.9 million in chips. And coming out in seat three from, we're going to go, sorry about that. My bad, everybody. It's my own writing, so I used to be a doctor. So from Philly, we've got Jake Schindler in seat three with over four million in chips, four million in chips. And from Provo, Utah, we do have Jared Greiner. Over 3.8 million in chips. No, he is not from Boston, but it sure does look like it. Looking good. All right, seat five. We do have Saya Ono from Los Angeles, California. Saya Ono, come on in. And she has over 3.4 million in chips. And in seat six, Men win with over 3.9 million in chips from Vietnam. All right, we are going to be getting started here with 40 minutes, 25 seconds left in the level. The blinds are going to be 30,000, 60,000 with a 60,000 big blind ante. Uh, we're gonna have the dealer come on up and we are gonna be shuffling up and dealing here in just a moment. Again, this is your final six, your final table of the official opening day of the World Poker Tour Main Tour Stop Season 17 here at the Gardens Casino. Best play in LA. Hello everyone, welcome to the final table of the Season 17 WPT Gardens Poker Festival main event. My name is Donnie Peters, I am joined here to start with Sam Cariotti. We both work for the World Poker Tour. We will be kicking off the commentating today before Dave Farah and Jesse Sylvia join us in about an hour or an hour and a half after they clear up some uh, some things that they're they're handling right now. But uh, Sam, how are you doing? I'm doing well, it's great to be here with you Donnie. Great. Uh, All right, each player's time sets have really uh, great been final reset. Today. They will um, each have you know, a lot of a lot of interesting players uh, headed up by Simon Lamb, uh, East Coast seconds, player, so recently moved will have out west. He is the owner of an ice cream they shop, uh, Roland Deep uh, Ice Cream Shop. They will uh, Simon uh, finished uh, to fourth in the WBC Borgata so Poker Open recently. Interestingly, that's the event that Jesse Sylvia won. So when Jesse comes on later, I'm sure he can talk a little bit to Simon's play and provide provide some really unique insight have a small in that regard. I'm looking six. forward to that. And yeah, that's going to be a really good. Jesse's a really insightful guy, really good player. Uh, so uh, definitely look forward to that. Simon carries a quite a big lead heading into this final table of more than 2 million in chips. He has 6.115 million uh, in seat one there. Seat two is Craig Varnell, former WPT 500 Las Vegas champion. He won the event when we were partnered with Party Poker on it. It was at Aria in Las Vegas, had more than 5,000 entries. Uh, and Craig took down that title. He also has a WPT final table under his belt. He came third in the season 15 WPT Choctaw event for more than $300,000. Uh, just recently this summer at the World Series of Poker, he won a WSOP gold bracelet. He went on to cash in the 25K PLO event there. So he's on quite the bit of a run. Uh, you know, really good player, uh, especially in the live on the live tournament scene. Um, so look out for him to, to make some moves if he can get some chips because he is the short stack right. coming into the final table. But all these players are fairly deep uh, given this structure. So, And um, Craig is a much different player when, when he does have those chips. I, I was there for the WPT 500 event that he was at in the final table at Choctaw. Um, and so I'm looking forward to, to seeing how his game's developed today. But if he gets chips, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. And he had some chips in this event. He was a chip leader yesterday on day four for a bit, um, you know, ended up, uh, losing a bunch of pots and was fighting as the short stack as as the night wore on and into the early hours of this yes. morning. Uh, we finished play around 4 a.m. So if any of these players look tired, um, that is the reason for that. 
Uh, looking over to C3, this guy le needs a little introduction. That's <laughs> Jake Schindler, 28-year-old uh, pro from Philadelphia, 4.4 uh, 4 million in chips. He's second in chips behind Simon Lamb. Uh, nearly $20 million in live tournament earnings, and he's regarded as one of the top no-limit tournament players of today's game. His best finish on the World Poker Tour was in Season 15 in the WPT5 Diamond World Poker Classic over at Bellagio. He won $736,000 uh, for that event. Uh, he's definitely, you know, he's been on the World Poker Tour several stops. He's one of those high-rolling players who he doesn't just stick to the 25Ks and higher events. He does dabble in... Uh, some smaller buy-in tournaments and some of these larger fields. Uh, so it's good to see him at this final table. The dynamic here is going to be interesting, the fact that he's on the left of Simon and the left of Craig. Um, with it, with it a good chip stack, too. Yeah. So he can he can definitely put some put some pressure on, on those two players who, you know, Simon especially might be looking to try and leverage his chip lead. But sure. knowing that he has obviously an experienced player in Craig on his direct left who has a stack where he could possibly move in a few times over any opening raises. And then Jake, uh, two to the left of him, uh, could also be an issue for him going forward, so we'll see how that dynamic plays out when they get the cards in the air. Seat four is Jared Greiner, 3.875 million in chips, 32-year-old player, originally from Utah. He now resides here in Huntington Beach. Don't let the New England Patriots gear fool you. <laughs> he is not from the East Coast, but that is his team. He has been on the final table of a WPT before, uh, wearing the exact same gear. That's yeah. his. Uh, that's his sort <laughs> of Tiger Woods Sunday, <laughs> you know, go-to gear is the Tom Brady jersey and the Patriots hat. Um, he finished third in the WPT LA Poker Classic uh, in Season 15. He took over $430,000 for that finish. Seat five is a local player, Saya Ono. Uh, female player, $3.445 in chips. She has the lowest amount of live tournament earnings heading into this event with uh, two, just under 200000 mm -hmm. But a uh, cash game player who's now recently uh, dabbled in tournaments. Um, has a really strong following of friends and family here who are rooting her on. This is her, what she considers her local home casino. Mm -hmm. um, so don't be fooled by the fact that she only has, you know, about $187,000 right. in tournament earnings. Very good player. She's earned a lot of respect Very from a lot of these players. And she's looking to become the second female player to win a WPT uh, open event, uh, WPT Open Main Tour right. event. She would and join uh, Emma Zimovic, who was Emma the first. Emma Zimovic, yes. And then seat six li needs little introduction. He's known as the master to many. His name is Men Nguyen, 63 years old, originally from Vietnam, now resides here in Southern California. He's uh, had a questionable past, to say the least. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of situations, including ones in this event, um, that have raised a lot of questions uh, regarding Men Win. If there was ever going to be a villain in poker, a villain at this final table, it is him for sure. Um, I don't think we need to hide the fact that there have been various incidents that have involved Men the Win. Um, yesterday, uh, a lot of people were following us on Twitter, following the coverage, and Men was, you know, he was drinking. He was cut off late into the night. Mm -hmm. He fell asleep at one point at the table. He had to take a walk for half an hour. There was an instance where Steve Sung went all in, men put the chips out to call, but the men pulled the chips back. So a lot of questionable stuff to him and something we will definitely want to keep an eye on. So those are the six players at the final table, and now that I've been ignoring all of the action so far, <laughs> we look up to see Jake Schindler flopping a set against Saya's Queen 10. Take a breath there, Donnie. Yes, I know. <laughs> it was great. Turn is a jack. Jake's still in the lead with his set of sevens. Checks over to Saya. I'm interested to see which players, because they finished around 4 a.m. tomorrow. I mean, or yesterday, uh, or today actually. Um, we did ha we didn't start here until uh, 4 today, so that we did have enough uh, turnaround time. But it'd be interesting to see who keeps the momentum from last night. Saya taking the initiative here with a bet after Jake sh checked to her. There were a couple hands last night when they were playing where they had used uh, a couple time chips on each other uh, to get a read on one, an one another or, or replay the situation. So there's a lot of hands that the two of them have played together that I'm sure I is going to be a factor today at the final table. Jake check raises all in. 
Sly so waste a little time giving it up. Uh, Sam, you mentioned the time chips. That has to do with the action clock provided by Protection Poker. So if you guys are watching this final table here, you see those sort of oval elongated chips. They say time on them. Those are 30 second time extension chips they have to do with the action clock. The action clock is uh, a play clock of sorts. Um, each player has 30 seconds with each action. Every time extension chip is worth 30 seconds more. Um, the players all start this final table with eight of them. And it keeps everything moving nice and smoothly and adds another l uh, dynamic to the final yes. table. It's very interesting. So you will see that come into, f come into play a few times. Um, not too many of these players were using them yesterday, um, which is a good sign. They tend to um, know what's going on. <laughs> Men was uh, actually using them the most, but that's only because he was falling asleep at the table right. and not necessarily using them by choice. The action clock is very player friendly and dealer friendly. Uh, if this is your first time seeing it, just know that when it does go down to zero, as long as a player has a time extension chip in front of them, they will get automatically extended 30 seconds. They don't have to actively put that chip out there, and that's so we don't interrupt their train of thought. Uh, and make that player friendly instead of it being an immediate dead hand. Yes. Play folds here over to Simon. He's got ace nine off. Raise and take for Mr. Simon Lamb. The chips that you guys see, the yellow slash orange, I believe they call them lemonade here at the Gardens Casino. Uh, those are for 5,000. The gray checkered Batman style chips, as I like to call them, are 25,000. And then the blue chips are 100,000. You were mentioning last night with uh, men taking a, a break from the final table. He had such a chip lead for a while that blinding out really did not affect his stack for a while. Yeah, it was really interesting. You know, a lot of the other players were kind of laughing and joking that, oh, should we just fold and let him blind out? But he had the chip lead, and he had a lot more chips than a lot of other players that that would have taken hours to, yes. to happen. Um, speaking of blinding out, um, the blinds, we are using the big blind ante to starting in season yes. 17, so that is in play here. That also helps move things along nice and quickly. The players seem to absolutely love it, not only in World Poker Tour events, but all across the poker industry. And it's, in my opinion, very likely to become the standard going forward. Um, I think know. so as well. I, th I know that there was initial um, hesitation at first on how would recreational or amateur players uh, deal with it. Oh, they um, love it. But they, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's so I think it surprised a lot of people. The concept of it, you know, just figure it out, which takes one or two hands, boom, ready to yeah. go. I'm surprised we haven't been doing it sooner. It's it's that been that popular. Here we got Jake with the nine three suited, Sia with the king deuce of spades. Jake picks up a pair of threes on the flop. Checks to Sia who bets one hundred twenty five thousand. Jake's going to stick around with the call. Turn is the eight of spades. Jake is still out in front. Checks again over to Saya. Saya wastes a little time in checking back. River is the nine of spades, giving Jake two pair. As long as he doesn't fold, he will take down this pot. He checks. Saya doesn't bite, checks behind. And this one's going to Jake. As you guys can see, these cards, they might look a little different to you. That's because they are the preferred playing card of the World Poker Tour, Faded Spade. Uh, Faded Spade rec recently launched uh, four-color decks. 
Maybe I'll we might that. be seeing those uh, pretty soon. Yeah, and, um, Jason Somerville and his team over at Running Up have been a big proponent of four-color decks. Um, so Faded Spade now has those. They are available for purchase nice. if you guys head over to FadedSpade.com. Again, these are the preferred playing cards of the World Poker Tour. And if you go to FadedSpade.com, you can use the code WPT to get 20% off your orders. And then be sure to follow Faded Spade on Twitter at Faded Spade Cards. They regularly tweet out special promotions, contests, and other company news. Um, so definitely check them out. I have several decks of these cards. <laughs> I love them. In the office Chinese poker game that we play every lunch break, we use Faded Spade Cards. They are great. 20% off. Does that can I use that discount? Code you can too? use that discount right. too, but I'm sure we have a few extra decks at the <laughs> office that I can just give you if you want them for free. <laughs> Men win here with the King Ten suited. Men seems to be wearing the same attire he was wearing yesterday. Ten seconds remaining. His spirits were high today. Um, seemed well rested. Well rested. We'll see if uh, he's got any Coronas flowing later on. He opens the action here to 140,000. Thumbs up to his uh, his crowd of supporters, which he does have a lot of. He has about, I don't know, 10 to 12 people mm -hmm. out there all rooting for him. They were helping him walk around the casino to get to get woken up last night at about 3 a.m. when he was falling asleep. At one point, uh, they went on break, and it looked like a like a pit maneuver, so to speak, <laughs> uh, like you see in Formula One where they kind of walked him over to one of the adjacent tables and one person was massaging his left arm, one person was massaging his right shoulder, somebody was uh, pouring hot tea into his mouth to get him to wake up. So they were well aware of the state that Men was in last night um, and trying to help him push through to the end of the night. Uh, luckily for him, it didn't didn't take too much longer. They ended play around 4 a.m. Mm. Looks like uh, Craig is taking that patient approach, the fact that he's a little bit shorter stacked. Uh, but again, once he gets chips, you'll see him be much more active. Yeah, and he's deep enough now where he doesn't necessarily need to, to rush anything or to freak out. Play here exactly. folds to Jared in the small blind, ace nine off. He makes the call. Saya in the big blind with yeah. king eight of spades. We talked with her earlier a couple days ago. Um, Kevin Taylor, who was uh, working uh, with our coverage team, uh, she said that um, at first glance, people just kind of think she's just a regular kind of tight player. Um, I don't, you know, that obviously probably has to do a little bit with the fact that she's a female. They just think she's going to play tight. And then uh, Saya said that after a few hands of playing with people, they tend to recognize that she does know what she's doing yes. and she has a lot of experience. Um, and then she gets a little bit more respect. Um, I think a lot of these players have picked up that she is certainly not afraid to ramp up the aggression no, at all. all. Uh, so we could see some some pretty some pretty good tricky play coming out of her. Jared makes the call. Sia's raise. Sia flops. Second pair. And Jared checks. Sai bet, and Jared wastes little time in giving it. In that interview, Sai was mentioning that being, you know, newly into the tournament scene, that she was noticing that comparing it to cash, that tournament seemed to be more of a pre-flop game in terms of the importance of those decisions. Where in cash, you have to play so many hands that it really does develop more sort of the post-flop uh, part of the game. And yeah, you're um, much deeper in cash games. Blinds don't escalate. Um, you know, throughout throughout play like they right. do in a tournament, so you can have a little bit more maneuverability. Um, good thing about yes. this tournament and a, a lot of you know the major events these days is that structures are 
pretty good that um, you know you see a lot of these cash game players doing very well when they do dabble in tournaments more because the structures are much better and do lend it themselves to to cash game players being able to you know like Saya mentioned play a little bit more post flop as yes. opposed to just the pre flop all ins that you you used to see you know several years ago and it's an interesting dynamic I saw earlier at this final table but even last night uh, where Jake will check to Saya um, and let her bet the way even if he has part of it um, and it does seem like you said earlier with her aggression with that that you know he's he's almost assuming that she's going to continuation bet and he's trying to, to combat that mm -hmm. Jake opens up here to 135,000 with Queen four of diamonds Jared thinks about it for a second and gives it up. Saya and men fold from the blinds and Jake takes it down. Good to know we have a very talkative final table today. I know. <laughs> it isn't as active as I thought it was going to be early on. Uh, it looks like Simon is sort of waiting, and maybe he's already factoring in ICM, but he, he has not, as a chip leader, been uh, that active so far. Yeah, he hasn't been throughout, um, and he recognizes that. I believe he wrote on his bio sheet that players would describe his style of play as quiet and tight. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that's what he's he's known for. He is he is quiet. He does play a, a tighter style of poker, but um, you know there is that feeling out period too um, after sure. a long night and then getting into the, the final table. See how things go. Here we have a raise from Jared to 135,000 with Ace Deuce. Saya has him dominated and makes the call. And Simon also calls from the big blind. Three-way action to the flop. Ten, apart, seven apart, four, Ten, seven, four. Eight, Simon eight. picks up the lead with top pair. Check from Simon leads to a continuation bet from Jared. Saya gives it up. Simon makes the call. Turn is the jack of hearts. Gives Jared a flush draw. Jared is so stoic with the sunglasses, you almost think he may be asleep. He is. He really doesn't give much away. Another bet here from Jared. This time he makes it 435,000 after Simon checked. Interesting spot for Simon now. Straight possibilities on the board, flush possibilities there. He has second pair. And he gives it up. Simon 
Yesterday, Simon was pretty quiet throughout the day, but he did make some noise uh, when he busted Tuan Fan in eighth place. Uh, relatively interesting spot. Um, uh, bully, uh, Justin Yaganuma, uh, who ended up finishing in seventh place, he opened the action. Simon three bet um, in position, and then Tuan moved all in. Uh, I believe it was hundred, about 135,000 was the opening raise, 310,000 was the three bet, and then all in for 1.29 million. Action folded back to Simon. He thought for a couple minutes and ended up calling with two tens. He was behind the kings mm. of Tuan Fan, but he did turn a ten, and that was the end of the road for Tuan Fan in eighth place. That allowed uh, Simon to break his neck and neck tie with um, Men Master. Men, yeah. At that time, they were pretty much going back and forth every other hand uh, with the chip lead and then that pot uh, allowed Simon to go on and secure secure the chip lead going into this final table Simon with ace 10 here is going to open it up makes it 150,000 Craig makes the call with a dominated hand. King four, three flop. Simon first to act. He checks. And Craig checks. Turns the queen of clubs. Simon checks and Craig takes a stab at it. Simon makes the call. River is the six of club. Simon checks again. Craig cannot win this pot unless he bets, and Simon folds. And that looks like that's exactly mm -hmm. what Craig's going to try and do. As far as 420,000, Simon quickly gives it up, and this one is going to Craig. This is interesting now. That's now a couple pots where Simon's lack of aggression has allowed yes. him to, or caused him to, to lose two pots, so. Um, seems to be a, a trend that the other players are picking up on, so we'll see if that continues throughout. Um, he still does have the chip lead, but that could dwindle uh, if this progresses. Yes. What's interesting about Craig there is because I've seen him make that bet in different situations. So when he's had a big chip lead, usually players at the table don't give him credit for it because it's just well, Why aggression. would you ever give the chip leader credit? Ever. Right. <laughs> but here, most I think most players with that shorter stack probably wouldn't take a stab at that, but Craig does have that aggression in him and with him betting there it almost feels like why would he be bluffing it off with uh, such a short stack and so he recognized the situation with Simon like you'd said and identified that and he took down the pot. Saya here with ace queen she comes in for a raise makes it 140,000 to go men checking his cards several times Decides to give up the jack two suited. Simon here with two tens. Comes in with a three bet to three hundred and fifty thousand.
Sai announces that she is all in for nearly 2.3 million. Simon decides to give it up, and Sai is going to take down the pot with a nice little smile right at the camera. Right at the camera. She knows where it is. She's a star. <laughs> so the theme continues. Simon continues to get run over a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. I've now you may have noticed or, or heard in that hand uh, leading up to the all-in bet at one point uh, you heard a voice say 10 seconds. Uh, that was the uh, tournament staff that, as courtesy, reminds the player when they have 10 seconds left. That way, if there's no confusion of a player that may have been daydreaming and not know that the action is on them. Uh, so they're doing really well in using the action clock and communicating with the players. Well, this is the, this is the casino where the action clock was, was invented. Yes. Uh, the action clock is provided to us by Protection Poker. Um, the brains behind Protection Poker are Kevin Quintanilla, who you guys saw if you were watching earlier, who kicked off the final table. He is the tournament manager here at the Gardens Casino, and then Kent McLaren uh, is his sidekick. So both of them uh, came up with the idea for the action clock. It has now been implemented on the World Poker Tour in all WPT main tour events. We're working to possibly bring it to other events, yeah. including WPT Deep Stacks and elsewhere. Um, they did use it in last season's uh, WPT 500 Los Angeles, mm -hmm. which was here. WPT 500 LA will take place this season at the Bicycle Casino right down the road coming up August 18th. We also used it in South America last year, uh, WPT Uruguay and WPT Argentina. And uh, it was, again, it was adopted very well by players and dealers alike. And it's great to see it make the rounds around the world. Jake here comes in with a raise. One of everybody's favorite hands in poker, 7 6 suited. Jared checks his option. Er, sorry, he did not raise, he just called. Jared checks his option with King 5. Nine eight seven two diamonds on the flop. Jake checks. Jared elects to take a stab at it. That's eighty five thousand. Jake likely will not be going anywhere with bottom pair, a straight draw, and a backdoor flush draw. <laughs> He makes the call. Jake makes the call. Turn is the jack of hearts. Jake checks. Jared checks. 9 of hearts on the river, pairing the board. Jared trying to get a little read there, tilting to the side. Usually he's looking straight forward. Check, check. Jake's going to take this one down. I believe Jake is now in the chip lead after Simon has lost three or four pots that have been relatively meaningful. Mm -hmm. Jake's won a few. All these players are guaranteed 
a little bit more than $115,000 for reaching this final table. Up top is more than $565,000, which includes a $15,000 seat into the season-ending WPT Tournament of Champions that will once again return to the Aria Resort and Casino in Las Vegas. Plus, the Gardens Casino has thrown in a brand new Mercedes-Benz SLC Roadster. It's right here in the lobby. It is in the lobby. It is white. It looks sleek. It looks sexy. It looks ready to go really, really fast <laughs> on the highway. That will also be going to the winner. That's not the only thing that Gardens uh, added to this event. They also added $200,000 in cash to the prize pool. So total $250,000 when you get the $200,000 cash and then the fifty k for the car. The bringing the prize pool up to uh, $2.944 million for this opening event of Season 17 of the WPT. The other part that they added, which I think really helped the, the turnout, 484 entries, is their satellite program. 584. 584, sorry. Thanks for correcting me. Um, is their satellite system. So they guaranteed 40 seats into the main event, and I believe the, and you'll correct me if I'm wrong on there, I believe it was 54 seats. You uh, are correct. We're actually saying yes. I'll correct you on that one. I redeemed seats. myself. Yeah. A couple players uh, ran pretty deep in this event. Uh, Jin Hao Han uh, made the final two tables, I believe. Yes. Final two or three tables. And then Samir Al Janidi also uh, ran very deep with a nice cash as well. Uh, most of the satellites were for $100. Mm -hmm. So anyone that was able to turn a satellite into a cash in this event um, definitely profited relatively nicely. Uh, given the investment that they put in in those satellites. So great to see the L.A. and Southern California area is always just really good for, for poker and for satellite entries into big main events. You see it a lot over at LAPC. You've seen it at the bike in years past. You see it now here at the gardens. So really good area, really good region for poker. Here you've got men win with an open-ended straight draw on the 10-8-4 flop of Jack-9 against Jake with Ace Queen. Men's gonna bet two hundred thousand. Ten seconds to make. Jake makes the call. Turn to the six of hearts. Jake is still in the lead with ace high, but men is as live as they come. Yes. Open ended straight draw, flush draw. He doesn't know it, but even if he gets this, Paris is jack or the nine. Mm -hmm. He'll check over to Jake. Jake checks behind. River is a six of clubs. Checks again, Jake and Jake checks. Men shows the jack of hearts, nine of hearts. Jake shows eight of clubs, queen of clubs. Jake takes Jake it down Jake with ace hot. Keeps spilling with the stack. ace of faded spades. Yeah, ace of spades. Now continue what we were talking about the satellites earlier. Uh, not only did Gardens contribute that to this main event, but they are going to be a year-round WPT branded poker room tournament room, so they will be holding satellites where you can win your way into any WPT tournament on the main tour. So yeah, so if you're in the Southern California area, the Gardens Casino will be the place to be uh, for satellite entries, which is very cool. You guys just saw the Chip counts there, the updated leaderboard. Jake Schindler has moved into the lead with more than 6.1 million in chips. Simon's fallen back into second place. And then at the bottom of the leaderboard, Craig Varnell started with 1.955 million. He's chipped up to more than 2 million now. 
Simon here picks up a pair of eight. Raise 140,000. He said 140,000, as you heard from the dealer there. I'm sure Craig would love to play the 7 6 suited. Mm -hmm. I just feel that Jake is in a really perfect situation here because Simon might not get out of line because he thinks Craig, Craig might push uh, with the short stack, but then Jake has the benefit of just letting them do what they do and then he'll assess it and then play against the rest of the table. Yep, it's definitely. That's how he has, without really putting himself in jeopardy, assumed the chip lead. Craig gives up his suited connectors and it's over to Jake, mm -hmm. who looks like he's got a little bit of something cooking up here. He's coming in with a three bet. He said 425. This kind of goes along with the theme of what's been happening so far. Players seem to be t picking on Simon a little bit. Simon makes the call. Nice big pot of one million here going to the flop between Simon and Jake. Simon will be first to act. Jack 9-9 nine, nine with two diamonds on the flop. Simon maintains his lead and checks. Jake throws out 375,000. Simon makes the call, shoots a look over at Jake, and we're going to the turn. Three of clubs on the turn. Simon maintains the lead and checks. We'll see if Jake keeps up the aggression here. Jake slows down, checks behind. And on both of those streets, it's like Jake is getting into a rhythm here. Ten down. seconds. The Action yep. clock went down to 10 seconds each time. There's no really long tanking. He's taking about 20 seconds, but uh, not giving anything away in terms of his timing. Five of diamonds here on the river brings in a possible flush draw. Simon checks. Simon checks. Jake checks. Simon's two eights are going to take this one down. Nice pot for him to get that trend line moving back in the right direction, especially against Jake, who's chipped up nicely and overtaken him, and you know clearly one of the more experienced and powerful players at the table. So Simon must be feeling good about that one. It's always good to get that first pot one <laughs> under your belt, you know, whether it's a cash game, whether it's a tournament, no matter if it's